as well to Anthea and Mariki for helping put this together. We were not going to do it. We debated whether we cancel the whole event after after lockdown, and I was convinced that we need to still go ahead. And you know, obviously, fear of doing this properly, but we're learning together. This is we're all being pushed in, into and, and forced into becoming fully digitally, you know, uh, enabled. And this is our very first webinar. So thank you for joining us, guys. Um, you know, this is our first one for In the Know Now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Media Mark, we're 22 years old now. Uh, we, we take our role in the industry as a, as a thought leader very seriously. Um, and this, is, this our, is our education platform. We started in 2017. Uh, it's been driven by, by the marketing team and by Mariki as well. And uh, we've had many, many sessions where you've pr probably a lot of you have been to uh, at our offices where we've done presentations about you know, radio and digital and sort of the broader education in the industry. But I think getting to the task at hand, we all instinctively know that great creative work has a magic power to supercharge a campaign's effectiveness. Uh, media planners know that great creative needs less investment behind it to cut through you know, the merely average work. You know, Kantar's ad track and media optimizers certainly prove that on television. Nielsen Catalina Solutions recently published data that showed that creative accounts for almost half of sales uplift in campaigns. That is double the contribution that Reach makes as the next highest contributor to sales. And I saw some stats about this in Europe recently, which I'll, I'll touch on in a moment. Uh, but some others credit power is often forgotten. You know, and often forgotten when it comes to audio and especially to radio. And, you know, when we talk to creative directors and copywriters out there, we, we, we keep hearing that creative attention gets directed elsewhere. Uh, often because clients simply see radio as a cheap activation medium uh, rather than a powerful brand builder and effective comms tool. And I think as well, a lot of the, um, the sort of younger copywriters and creatives are also living in a different space as well. So whilst we like to, you know, like the fact that they recognize as power to trigger purchase, we believe they're missing out on, on true possibilities. So we, at Media Mark, we passionately believe in the power of radio and audio more widely. We're moving ourselves into more of an audio business first and foremost. Today, we want to remind ourselves of the great power of radio creative and we want to reopen our minds to its possibilities. And we've assembled an amazing panel of, of passionate uh, uh, specialists in, in, in that space and uh, you know we're going to take you through them but before we, we, we um, go into the creative side uh, so something I want to clear up and it's probably not directly relevant to this but it's kind of a felt like a burning issue to me and it's it's uh, it's this one that no one is listening to radio right now and I've heard this uh, a, a few times and it's you know it seems it's it's a strange time we're living in um, I think we all admit that and I sort of interrogated a bit about why is, why do people even say that and I think it's because you know people aren't driving therefore there's no drive time listening and obviously everyone listens to radio in in, in the drive time but uh, you know I wanted to interrogate those facts in fact some of our radio brands have actually done that for us I mean this is the BRC figures for for example that you know, even before corona hit us most, uh, um, most listening happens at home, actually. And this is from the BRC data. That's normal, normal listening. You know, so this isn't something that uh, is, is, is out of the norm. But this slide over here shows the full ecosystem of one of our radio brands. And I purely use Jacaranda as an, as an example because they're probably the most advanced when it comes to the, you know, demonstrating the full power of, of, the, of the audio uh, in e ecosystem, where radio is actually amplified by digital in many, many different places. So people are listening, I put up the top left over there, anytime, anywhere, and on any device. And, and that's, I think, what's, what's probably spiking some of the listening we're picking up right now. You know, some of the latest BRC figures, not to bore you with numbers, but it's shown that all radio, commercial radios, drive times have increased, you know, and all our brands. But mid-morning, 9 to 12, and even mid-afternoon, sort of midday to 3 o'clock, that's also showed double-digit increases for many of the radio brands in our audience, in our audience, in our, in our platforms. 
including big weekend numbers. And I think this is to do with extra streaming downloads, um, app downloads, podcasting. It's, it's increasing listenership, especially during a period like this. When people want to be you know, connected and, and know what's happening in the world. Now, talking of continuously connected, uh, there's some research that was done in the last, well, you can see the numbers over here, between the 15th and the 23rd of March. So just uh, prior to lockdown, uh, we pull a whole lot of stats over here, and it shows you that app downloads have increased massively on, on, on Jacaranda FM, for example. And live streaming has, has massively increased to over 100,000 new live streams in the sort of week leading to lockdown. So it tells you a lot about what, we're, what people are thinking about. And I think one of our other brands, Gagazi, does something very similar. This is done in March, this, this research, just showing where all the new app downloads have come from and you know, they're, they're listening, which is linear and nonlinear. And a lot of it's coming from Gauteng or Gagazi, which is a KZN station. And that again is people wanting to keep in touch with home, with family, what's happening in their in their own their own uh, you know backyards. So I think radio at a time like this is probably in a in a more important space than than ever before. Um, there's some research I've seen in Europe as well, which has um, shown that streaming music, strangely enough, has declined, and that's because people are tuning more back into real radio where they can act with people. And, and listen to people. I think, you know, it, it's kind of obvious in a way. But these facts here on the screen um, comes from our own brands, like Kahisa Media and from Alton Media and our friends at Prime Media Broadcasting. And the only reason I'm showing this right now, it's very recent research just done in the last few weeks leading up to lockdown. And, you know, Kahisa Radio interviewed, they polled some 17,000 uh, listeners, which is a massive number. And they found that you know, most listeners on the, on the brands say they'll listen more to radio during the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, than they really are right now. Um, even 702, they've got a massive increase in, in, in calls per day on their breakfast shows. KFM's interaction on their WhatsApp line is up 20% in the last week. You know, KFM shown a lot more hits to their websites. So it, it does prove that in a time like this, this is one to hear news they can trust. There's so much fake news out there that we've got to keep, you know, warning everyone against the, uh, the fear factor. And I think people want to be reassured. They want to be informed. They want to be educated. They want to be entertained. They want, well, they want to be distracted. And I think even our public broadcast is, is a massive, has a massive uh, responsibility in a time like this, especially when people need to hear the facts and what they need to do to prevent the virus spreading. And it's a friend to us right now. There's a great article in The Guardian, which I will, I will post on, on, on my LinkedIn page later, just from some of the presenters and DJs in, on European radio stations, in the UK specifically, that they're broadcasting from home like our guys are, and they're in their own home environments, and somehow audiences are enjoying that even more than when they're in a professional studio, because it's more real, it's more authentic. And I think that's, 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 the, power, that's the power of radio. So I think, uh, you know, if I can move on. So we know people are listening. You know, I think I've cleared that up, a little bugbear of mine. But I think how do we get them to hear our, our brand messages more in a, in a time like this? But I went to a, a, a conference in Paris in end of January, beginning of February. So don't worry, there's no, I'm not contagious anymore. But uh, it was a company, an organization called ECTA. They were established in 1970. Two, they've got 132 members from companies all over the world and all in the radio and the television sales house space. And uh, we probably their newest member as Kahisa Media and Media Mark. And, you know, it was fascinating going there because I, I met Gaussian Radio Center from Nielsen's, from Kantar, from Omnicom Group uh, internationally, from all the big radio and TV and broadcasters around the world. And the whole major theme of, of and thrust of it was all around creativity in audio and the power of good creativity. And it was all around, you know, things like, you know, good creative audio drives 50% of your, of your, of your, your impact. Um, you need a great brand and audio strategy. Uh, there was, you know, research from Radio Center about that, you know, people are twice as happy when they listen to the radio. Well, people are, you know, ads more memorable when, uh, when 
people are actually doing other things while they listen, which is a big impact. You're cutting your, your carrots and listening to radio. Those ads become more memorable for you. And one of the most interesting uh, um, um, companies I met there and saw their presentation does, as you see on the screen, algorithmic testing of, of audio ads and creative to make sure that you have the right ad that's going to work properly and get the, the biggest impact. And they've got 6,000 odd ads. Um, I'm telling us um, they have all the top ads from the Clear Awards, the Mercury Awards, the, uh, the, 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 the Can Lions, all pumped in the system and literally feed your kind of ad through it and it, it spits out a whole lot of uh, attributes over here, recall, intent, that makes you happy, and negative, powerful, relaxed, authentic, and it gives you feedback whether this ad's going to be successful or not. And all the big brands in Europe are starting to use it from BMW to MasterCard to McDonald's. And this is coming soon to our market. And I've, you know, what I did put in the slide, which we'll share when it's, uh, when it's not being corrupted, is that we want to bring these guys to market here to bring them to marketers and to creatives. So that we can start you know, pre-testing our ads because that's how important they are and showing little facts like if you bring the branding up front in an ad, you get better impact. Uh, there's interesting insights about that a female voiceover gets better response than a male voiceover. Sorry, guys. But they get 75% of ads still have male voiceovers. It's lots of little insights like that. But, you know, over the next few, few months, we're bringing lots of insights from, from ECTA. And it's going to, you know, up our game massively. And the reason we also joined, just to remind myself of this, is years ago, those of you who remember, there was something called the Radio Advertising Bureau, the RAB, which unfortunately, um, you know, didn't survive the, the internal politics. So we searched internationally and the, between the radio centers and the UK RABs, ECTA has everyone involved. It's a nonprofit organization. Everyone's part of it. So I'm really excited to bring you, you know, you guys lots of insights over the next few months around what ECTA is bringing to the party. So watch, watch this space. But I think uh, let's, I think enough from me. I want to get to the reason most of you are probably here. It's, uh, it's you meet our panelists and hear exactly what makes great radio. Uh, and I'm going to introduce, uh, first of all, our third speaker, Louis Enslin. Hey, hey Louis, welcome. Um, Louis worked on both the 2019 South African Can winning radio campaigns. He's a passionate composer, sound designer, and owner of Produce Sound. I'm excited to hear what production values can do to bolster effectiveness. Then we've got Natalie, Natalie Burt, our second speaker. And Natalie will bring science to the subject of creativity sharing global and local lessons as to how we can use the media more effectively. Natalie is Kantar's Director of Creative Development for Middle East and Africa. She has served as an Apex Award judge and regularly presents Kantar's South Africa's best liked ads. We'll give practical evidence-based guidelines of how creativity can increase effectiveness. And last but certainly not least is our award-winning first speaker, Sonetta Ngubani, Going to share some lessons about how to win at can his advice and examples provide a framework for thinking about the possibilities of radio in a refreshed way so is both the writer and performer of the first isiZulu commercial campaign to win big at can and when i say big i mean it's gold it's silver it's bronze it's huge and he has a unique perspective to share about being locally and globally relevant whilst writing award-winning ads so i'm going to hand over to you Sonene, and you can't exactly do a Big round of applause, but I was going to just say, welcome team, and uh, looking forward to, to hearing what you have to say and share. 